Okay, guys. Right. So I am here to tell you to start off the week, kick off the week with what are the creative industries? <laughs> Always a good place to start. What are we even talking about? Um, okay, so my aim by the end of this session is to make sure that you are fully aware of what the creative industries are um, and what are the jobs within them and how likely are you to be able to get a job? Um, so any questions as we go through, please do put them in the q and I think you guys um, should be able to have access to it. Um, uh, Mike, if you could just monitor the Q&A, that'd be fantastic. Um, but yes, so um, this talk is probably about 15, 20 minutes long, and then we have loads of time for questions afterwards. So please do write your questions in, and then I will answer everything after we finished. Okay. Okay, so this is me and my business partner, May, who I've already mentioned. So I don't really need to necessarily do this intro because you already know who I am and what we do at Eric. So I'm going to skip straight past that. Actually, I'll tell you why we know so much about the creative industries. So May and I have specialised in career education about the creative industries for like around seven years now. So although we know what careers in the creative industries looks like in 2022, we do know that other people don't seem to be aware of how much the creative industries has changed in the last 10, 20 years 30 years and what it looks like now. So this is my kind of attempt at sharing all of that accumulated knowledge over the lot that we've gained over the last seven years. I'm going to share it all with you in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> this is a crash course. Right. Oh God. I don't know what's going on with the, um, okay, well ignore this bit here. That's not meant to be there. What are the creative industries? Okay. So first of all, does any, I don't think anyone knows what the creative industries are. If anyone does, please do put it in the Q&A. Oh, Mike does. Okay, but Mike, you don't count. <laughs> Sorry. So I don't want to be rude, but <laughs> you have a little bit of a head start. Okay, so what are the creative industries? If you are worrying that you don't know what the creative industries is, don't worry. That's absolutely normal and absolutely fine um, because no one really does, to be honest. The creative industries have not done a very good job of telling people what they look like in, you know, 2023. Sorry, we're in 2023, not 2022, aren't we? Um, okay, so this is what the creative industries is. So the creative industries is actually made up of 16 industries that we will go into in the next slide, but there are different subsectors of the creative industries that it's very important to be aware of because often the creative industries just gets lumped into things like, let's say media and entertainment or the screen industries or the arts or whatever it is. Um, it is so much wider than that. Um, and here is my attempt at showing you what the breakdown of the creative industries is. So we have the creative industries at the top here. Then we have four subsectors, the screen industries, the arts, pop culture and media and communications. And then underneath all of that, Createch. So Createch, which I've said before, is the intersection between creativity and technology. This feeds into all of these. So Createch is not a single industry in itself. It basically feeds into every single one of these subsectors of the creative industries. So already you should maybe have one or two myths debunked at this point, because you're probably thinking, or you may have been thinking that it was just such a small sector, but it actually spans across all of these subsectors. Okay. What are the 16 creative industries? Okay, so this is a very comprehensive, easy to digest list of actually what the creative industries is. When we say the creative industries, plural, these are the 16 sectors that we're talking about. Okay, so it isn't the traditional image of music, art, and fashion that people often think of. It also includes major player industries, such as advertising, gaming, design, and of course, all of that creativity that operates online. For example, social media, which obviously we have a great session on later on uh, in the digital media section. <laughs> okay. And it's important to be aware of how much the creative industries has changed. The creative industries that your parents experienced or the adults around you experienced and the creative industries that you experience are completely different. So when you get an adult saying to you that there's no stability, no money or future in creative jobs, that's not true at all. It may have been true for them when they were growing up, possibly. 
However, that's not true anymore. So you actually officially, according to a study by Deloitte, which was done in 2019, you actually have at least 100 times more chance of getting a well-paying, steady job in the creative industries than your parents had. There are officially more than 100 times more jobs available than 30 years ago. Um, and they are very future-proof jobs. The rise of technology in the last 20 years alone, here we go, why has the creative industries grown? The birth of the internet here. The rise of technology in the last 20 years alone has made creativity almost completely unrecognizable to how it was before the internet went mainstream. Technology has enabled everyone to be creative in the space of their own homes and make money out of it if they want. It's also created entire new departments of businesses. For example, every business now needs someone doing their social media and creating content. That wasn't a job that existed 30 years ago before social media became a thing. It's even created entire new industries as well. So some of those industries that we looked at before in that list of 16, some of them are brand new, which we'll go into in a second. Um, and some of those brand new industries are already bigger than some of the more traditional creative industries. So let's look a bit into a bit more detail around which ones have grown loads and which ones are new. So obviously the ones with the little green new tag next to it are basically weren't around 30 years ago. And the ones with ticks next to them means that they have grown, they've exponentially grown in the last 30 years. So they've more than doubled in size. Okay. so. Um, uh, games. Okay, so let's look at the ones with ticks that have had super levels of growth in the last 30 years. So games is a great example. Let's just delve into games a little bit more here. Why has it grown so much in the last 30 years? Um, it's actually doubled in size in the last 10 years alone. So this is like one of the biggest success stories of growth in the creative industries. And it's because games has become so accessible to literally everyone and anyone. Um, it's not just streaming has not just become an activity in itself, but it's actually also now a form of spectator sport. So it's even bleeding into that entertainment sector. Games is no longer limited to just sitting on a computer or using a console. You can game on your phone anywhere you want. All of these things have contributed to the fact that games has doubled in size only in the last 10 years because of accessibility. It's a huge industry now. Um, and as I said before, some of these industries are also brand new. So they weren't really around 30 years ago because they rely on the internet to exist. VFX and animation, let's have a look at that really quickly. So um, only hand-drawn, so animation obviously did exist over 30 years ago. We've all seen Mickey Mouse, you know, the original Disney cartoons, right? That did totally exist before. VFX, however, is a completely new sector. So um, VFX wasn't even on the map. Now, everyone here watching probably will have seen at least one of the Avengers movies or the Harry Potter movies. So almost over 50% of those films are computer generated. So they are using VFX. They actually aren't, you know, um, filmed live action. Um, actually, I've just realized not that many people will know what VFX is. Okay, so Sorry, normally I do this in front of a live crowd. So I have lots of confused faces and I'm like, oh, reminder to tell you what VFX is. Um, for people that don't know what VFX is, by the way, very common. VFX, again, very bad at advertising themselves, very bad at making people aware of the fact that they are an industry that exists. VFX is short for visual effects. So um, uh, I'm sure everyone here has been on YouTube and has stumbled, stumbled across a video of people um, filming things in front of a green screen or, you know, those kind of like in those morph suits, those green morph suits, like running around, like throwing things, you know, um, doing all that kind of stuff. That is the VFX industry. So um, it's taking stuff that's filmed in front of a green screen and then basically transferring it onto into a film or a game or a TV show, whatever it is, and making it you know, a magical world or bringing it to life. And it's completely computer generated. So the Avengers is a really good example of that because all of those explosions and stuff that you see, 90% of those are not real. 90% of those are actually VFX in, you know, practice. So, so much because the Avengers movies are so fantastical 
over 50% of those movies are computer generated. They are created by VFX, which just goes to show how affluent that industry is because the Avengers movies make a lot of money. Okay, so um, the prediction is that with the VFX industry, in another 10 years time, over 50% of all films created will be computer generated. So they're even scanning the faces of movie stars right now in order to be able to use digital versions of those actors when they die, which is kind of crazy. Why are they doing that? Why are they putting so much effort into that practice? It's because as computers get more powerful, VFX is actually going to become a cheaper option for making entertainment. So there may not even be a need for real time actors in the future. That's how much the VFX sector is growing. It's actually at risk of taking over live action. Um, and that's why they're going to the effort of scanning famous movie stars faces, because it may be cheaper to use someone's image after they die than actually using someone who is alive to film live action. Isn't that nuts? Okay, there we go. That's a good example of how much the VFX sector is growing. Bear in mind, it didn't exist 30 years ago, which is mad. Okay, so, but moving on from that, because you know I've spoken a lot about VFX animation. Okay, however, this is what you are battling against. Okay, when anyone says the words artists, singers, or actors, Whenever, whenever anyone says the words creative industries, these tend to be the jobs that people think of. And that is what you've probably been told by adults around you for years and years, but that simply isn't the case. The whole purpose of this image is to show you that that is the tip of the iceberg. So there are actually 3.3 million people working in creative jobs in the UK. So that's one in 11 jobs in the UK are classified as creative. So just to break down that number for you, there are 2.3 million people working in the creative industries, and there's a further 1 million people working in creative jobs in the corporate world. So we're going to get onto that in more detail um, shortly, but in total, that's 3.3 million people. And I think it might actually be slightly more than that now, because this is like, this was taken from uh, 2018 stats, I think. Um, and then as a comparison, just to let you know, because sometimes these numbers can be a bit abstract, right? You're like 3.3 million. Yeah, but how many people are there in the UK? What's the comparison? The STEM industry employs 2.4 million people. So there are actually 1 million more, nearly 1 million more people working in creative jobs in the UK than there are STEM. So that hopefully should give you some sort of comparison as to how big the creative industries are. And I can promise you that all these people are not artists, singers and actors. They are doing so much. It's insane. So we're going to get into this. OK, just quickly touching upon um, that um, message that I just told you about how there are one million people working in creative jobs in the corporate world. So and it's the same vice versa, really. You know, there are there is no you'd have you do not need to do a creative job in a creative environment you can do you know you can overlap the creative and corporate world as much as you'd like really so if you want to be a designer you do not have to limit yourself to being a designer in a design agency you can happily be a designer for a law firm um sorry i've actually kind of jumped ahead a little bit here so um, we are just quickly talking about creative jobs in the corporate industry. So here is a very, very short list um, on the right hand side here um, of the variety of different things that you can do. Here's some examples of creative jobs that you can do in a corporate world. Um, so I'm talking about designers here. I gave the example of you don't have to be a designer in a design agency. You can do it in a law firm or you can, you know, be you can work for the government or you can work for a restaurant. Like it doesn't matter whichever industry you want to work in. There are always creative jobs available. And then on the other side, vice versa, there are loads of corporate jobs in the creative industries. So, you know, there isn't a business out there that doesn't need a lawyer or an accountant at some point. <laughs> That's a really good example. 
you know, we've got to abide by the law and we have to be able to do our taxes, <laughs> regardless of whether you are creative or not. Exactly. Um, so, and, you know, Mike and I both have accountants and we've both consulted lawyers at various points. So we are living proof of the fact that we definitely need those specialisms um, in the creative industries. So, and there are a huge amount of people doing corporate jobs in the creative world. So let's say you love the sound of architecture, but you don't have the skills to be an architect or you don't want to spend seven years studying. You know, after you. Um, you can totally be an administrator for an architecture firm, for example. That is a way that you can immerse yourself in the architecture world without actually having to be an architect. Um, or you can work in HR at an art gallery, for example, or you could be a developer for a fashion brand. It's totally possible to overlap between the two worlds. I think you've got that point now, so let's move on. Um, oh, great, fantastic. There we go. Okay, and this point this is one of my favorites. You do not have to choose one industry either. So um, if you do decide that you want to work in the creative industries, you really don't have to choose one specific industry to go into. All of the different creative industries overlap or bleed into each other now. So you can aim to go into an area that combines two or three or possibly even four passions of yours. So just to give you a couple of examples, let's say that you are a film obsessive, but your skill is design. You can become a graphic designer for a film company. We actually have someone speaking later on um, uh, tomorrow in the game section at the end of the day, who is an audio specialist in the games world. So he kind of um, does sound design and com like composition. He literally like composes music or like edits other people's music. To, for a gaming company that's literally his full-time job so he's combined the passion of audio and games to be able to you know create a specialism it's totally possible to be able to do that in any area of the creative industries so make sure that you aren't limiting yourself by thinking in a linear mindset as well your creative options are far wider than you think and you can tailor your career path to what really interests you on multiple levels this is something that I think actually young people are often misled with. Um, and I think sometimes it's like, oh, you've got to choose art. That's it. That's the only place that you can go into. I mean, you know, the variety of things that you can do in art in any different creative industry is kind of nuts. So absolutely just start exploring the options, the overlaps between the different industries. Um, and yeah, don't box yourself into one specific um, sector. OK, and then we're just going to really quickly go through um some myths about the creative industry some common myths um uh about <laughs> the size like the you know um how quickly it's growing blah 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 we're going to be very quick about this one okay so how big and exciting are the creative industries right now what does the creative landscape really look like and what are your chances of getting a job so here are some out of date perceptions that i am going to correct you on only students who do music, art and drama can be creative. So this is one of the, I think, the most like widely misconceived, uh, uh, wide misconceptions about the creative industries. Anyone from any background who studies any subject can go into the creative world. Um, so you do not have to study any of these subjects in order to work in the creative industries. If you want to study these subjects, that's great, but it is not designed only for music, art and drama students. Like it can be anyone. Anyone can go into the creative sector. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. In fact, actually, I've got a here we go. I've created a really bad um, visualization of some of the <laughs> subjects at school and how they could possibly feed into the different industries below. What I should have done, just so you know, is um, put every school subject at the top there and then every single creative industry that exists under each subject, <laughs> because that's how wide it is. That is how much um, every school subject can span into the creative industries. But I didn't do that because I didn't have time. So this is a very shortened version. Um, OK, so I'm going to give you an example um, of how, for example, film basically needs people from a variety of different backgrounds who have studied a variety of different subjects at school um, in their in their industry. OK, so you may not know this, but there are 588 crew jobs on a film set on average. So that is not including cast. That's not actors. That's nearly 600 people working purely backstage. 
which is mad. Like that's huge. That is a huge production. And these jobs require a variety of skills and backgrounds. Doing a drama GCSE or A-level isn't relevant for many of those 600 roles available. If you have one, it's not going to count against you. That's absolutely fine. It's great to have one, but it's not a requirement to work backstage in many of those roles. Carpentry, sound engineering, historical fact checking. That's like an actual job that um, is often on film sets that are like period dramas, for example. Body language specialists. There are so many things you can do that a drama qualification doesn't even touch upon, but you can still work in film. So there's just one example of like the variety of things that you can do, the variety of subjects that can feed into uh, the film industry and that just being one example. Um, actually just quickly one of my favorite examples is um in the culture sector they rely really heavily on scientists to be able to like restore artifacts really accurately and and kind of without damaging them so that chemistry is like a really big thing in the culture and heritage world so you know there's another example of how if you're a scientist you don't actually have to work in a lab you could be working like on a kind of archaeological dig <laughs> you could be doing anything um okay so but i think you've got that point so moving on Second question, a second myth. It's not very big. We are, you already know that there are literally millions of people working in creative jobs in the UK. However, I am going to give you some more concrete stats around that, some extra concrete stats around that. Okay, so the creative industries contributes more money to the economy than automotive, that's making cars, life sciences, aerospace, rockets and stuff, and oil and gas industries combined. So the creative industries makes more money for the UK economy than all of those industries combined. That's how like affluent and lucrative it is. And then, like we said before, one in 11 jobs in the creative industry is actually um, a creative job in the UK. So the creative industries actually contributes one, 120 billion pounds to the UK economy every year. So it's a lot of money. It's literally billions of pounds. Um, and that's growing exponentially, which we will get onto um, shortly. But there's some like money stats to put behind it. This one, however, tends to be the favorite slide with most students. <laughs> okay, so lots of people think it is a badly paid industry. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't though. It depends which industry you go into. The average salaries for the different creative industries. So I've taken the top creative industries here, the top paying ones, basically. Oh God. So we have here, as you can see, lots of the um, entertainment and digital sectors are all like the create tech, the heavy create tech industries in the creative industries. They are very well paying. So gaming, obviously, like, you know, we've already covered that gaming is growing like that. Every time, the more people game, the more people in that industry get paid. That's essentially the kind of correlation. So uh, every single one of you, who I'm sure all of you are gamers in your own right, you're all contributing to the fact that people in the gaming sector are being paid so much money. TV streaming, I'm sure everyone watches either Disney, Netflix, or, you know, I don't know, what are the other ones? Apple TV, Hey You, any of these things, Now TV. Again, you guys are contributing to the fact that people in that sector are getting paid so much. So the more you guys are using all of the creative industries products, the more people get paid it tends to be in these sectors. And that is why these people get paid so much money. So you guys can go in to all of these industries um, and get paid a good amount. Absolutely, it is not that image of a struggling artist living paycheck to paycheck anymore. Um, okay. And then limited growth, people often think that the creative industries is either stagnant, they don't really think it grows that much. <laughs> Mike is avidly shaking his head there. Absolutely, you're right, Mike. The creative industries is growing five times faster than the rest of the UK economy. So it's growing so quickly. And again, it goes back to what I was just saying on the previous slides um, about the fact that the more you guys are using these outputs, the products that the creative industries creates is making, the more these sectors are growing. Um, we have now, you know, one of the most competitive film and TV industries in the world. We're due to have more studio space than um, LA in by 2030 because the UK creative industries is so good at creating film and TV that people are demanding across the world, people are demanding more of it. 
things like, you know, Bridgerton, you know, or um, like Downton Abbey and like, you know, all of the, like, um, actually, I'm, <laughs> that one has a swear word in the name, so I'm not going to say that one. Um, but <laughs> there are loads. I mean, every time you guys go on Netflix, you'll see lots of the most popular um, uh, um, productions that people are watching. So many of them are UK based um, and filmed in the UK and doing all these things. So anyway, I won't go on about that. But film and TV being a really good example of how quickly and why the UK industries, the UK creative industries is growing. Okay, tech versus creative. I'm just going to really quickly skim through this and then we're going to go to the Q&A. Okay, so it's, uh, yes, um, I want to end on a few points on creativity, uh, creativity and tech because tech is so high in everyone's agenda. It's always being said in the media, everywhere, you know, by people around us that tech is the future. However, tech needs creativity and creativity needs tech. The two work very much in tandem because, as we said before, um, right at the beginning, Mike absolutely nailed the nail on the head. Create, um, uh, innovation, creativity is all about problem solving and innovation. And those are two things, two pillars that the tech industry is based on, innovation and problem solving. And so both of them need each other. So. Um, creativity is not defined as being linear anymore. Creativity and tech are increasingly becoming hybrids of each other. There is a whole subsector of the creative industries called Createch, like we've already said. Friday is a day that is basically dedicated to that. So please do um, uh, catch us on Friday where we have lots of people talking about what you know uh, creative skills um, are needed in the tech industry and what tech skills are needed in the creative industry, all of that. Areas of the creative industries that require tech skills like digital marketing, digital content creation, editing, UX, UI, which you guys might not know about. That's kind of like the designing of apps or websites and stuff like that, making sure that, um, you know, buttons are the right size for people to, you know, be enticed to click on them more, stuff like that. I mean, there are so many things about creativity and tech, areas of creativity and tech that you guys may not know about, but there are, you know, entire industries, basically, like, huge departments of businesses that are dedicated to specific creative tech skills. So this is the future. <clears throat> what you guys might want to know already um, or right now is that the value of UK Create Tech has increased by 161% since 2017. So Create Tech is like generating more and more and more money. It's getting more and more attention. So it's really important that schools are aware of this as a term because this is the future. And then just to kind of ram it home, I suppose, <laughs> Create Tech and Climate Tech are the two fastest growing areas mm -hmm. of tech. So tech is like a big, I'm just going to put me on mute, Mike. <laughs> we just heard you're enthusiastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, tech is not just coding. We will all know tech almost has the same problem that the creative industries has in the way that when anyone says the word creative industries, no one knows what that means. Tech also has a similar problem. Tech is such a wide term that is used for everything now. No one really knows what that means. Um, Tech is kind of divided into many subsectors in the same way that the creative industries is. Create tech and climate tech being two of them, and they are the fastest growing areas of tech. So that's really important to know. Those two are the future of tech, essentially. Um, I've said the word tech so many times, it's like not really sounding like a word anymore. Um, <laughs> okay. So that is um, everything that you need to know. Um, uh, you guys will already have this, but um, this is our uh, microsite for schools that you might want to go and have a look at. It's all about the 16 creative industries that we've just delved into in more detail. There's lots of like helpful free, all of it free school resources um, that we found from across the internet um, for each of those 16 different creative industries. So uh, there's a little synopsis of what industry, what the different industries are. I'm, I, you can go and explore it. I'm not going to explain it. And then this is obviously the app. So please do download the app. But this is not, this talk is not about that. Anyway, watch a movie, stay for the credits, look at the amazing list of job roles. Absolutely, Mike, you are so right. Watch the credits after a movie is finished or a TV show and you will see how many people work in that um, on that production. And that could be you. Okay, so that is it. That's the end of my talk.